Hi, I'm Andrew Schmidt. I'm Assistant Professor of Emergency Medicine with the University of Florida Jacksonville. Today we're going to talk about STEMI and cardiac arrest. To start off, with this web link you can find a handout that has everything I want to talk about in this lecture. It also has my references and an algorithm for treatment that we'll talk about at the end. So cardiac arrest, how big of a problem is it? Well, about 395,000 out-of-hospital cardiac arrests happen every year. Now, of these, our survival rates are pretty dismal. Uh, on average, about 6 to 10%. It depends on what area you live in, the region, and the type of pre-hospital care you have. Some communities enjoy about 30 to 40% survival rate, but in general, about 6 to 10%. So what that results in is about 350,000 deaths every year due to cardiac arrest. Now, the initial causes vary. Uh, but in general, it's thought about 40 to 70% are due to acute myocardial infarction. There are other causes we think about, electrolyte abnormalities, uh, pulmonary embolism, um, and other dysrhythmias as well. So you have your cardiac arrest patient, and this is their first ROSC EKG. So what do you do with this? I mean, it seems straightforward. STEMI, we know how to treat that, but what about a STEMI that shows itself after cardiac arrest? If you think about it, the heart was just getting their ass kicked. They're getting CPR, they're maybe getting defibrillations, they're getting a bunch of medications. So it makes sense that you see an injury pattern. But does this actually mean there's an acute occlusion that needs to be treated? We'll look at the literature to try to shed a little light on this. So in general, when we look at the literature surrounding this, STEMI is actually a minority of out-of-hospital cardiac arrests. It does show increased survival when the person does show a STEMI, and that makes sense. That means they probably have a treatable lesion that we know what to do with. Um, as you probably know, most of our cardiac arrests, we don't actually know the cause. There's not much we can do. We're kind of left there twiddling our thumbs once you get ROS. But when you have a STEMI and they go to the cath lab, that's a treatable cause that can actually increase survival. They also have increased significant lesions on cath when compared to patients who don't have a STEMI following cardiac arrest. And again, that makes sense. So to dig a little deeper when we talk about lesions, the LAD is usually going to be your most common lesion that is going to result in cardiac arrest. So again, there's no question that cath helps with STEMI. We know that every organization that follows this and researches it tells you if there's an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest plus a STEMI on the EKG, go ahead and go to cath. Yes, they're sometimes going to be negative, but most of the studies are showing about 90 to 95% of these patients do have a stentable lesion. So why do we cath patients? Well, again, we know this, it increases survival. Especially when there's a treatable lesion, it saves heart tissue and it increases survival. When you add this on with dedicated pre-hospital systems that are tied in with your hospital system, stuff like targeted temperature management and critical care, uh, this boosts survival even more. So why don't we cath everybody? Well, there's a real cost to this. Uh, first off, there's a monetary cost. So if we're cathing everyone who walks through the door, that's a big cost to the system and to the patient as well. Also, we may be just increasing the amount of people who go on to, to live a, a vegetative state or eventually die of a, of a brain death in the ICU. And that really doesn't help society altogether. Also, there's complications. So when we look at the data for low-risk chest pain, we know that when we cath more low-risk low chest pain, we have more people who actually experience complications uh, for no benefit. So moving past the STEMI portion and now going to a very different patient, this is the post-cardiac arrest patient that doesn't have a STEMI. So this is an actual EKG of a recent cardiac arrest patient we had. And after the resuscitation, we got this EKG, and it's very frustrating. You don't know what to do with that. Now, this was actually about four in the morning, and now again, like I said earlier, we're kind of just left twiddling our thumbs, not really knowing what to do. We don't actually know the cause. We don't know any definitive treatment. We're just going to stabilize the patient at that point and get an ICU bed. But if we were to call our cardiologist, we're going to have the conversation that a lot of us are all too familiar with. That we started getting an argument of whether or not this is the heart. So in cardiac arrest patients that don't have a STEMI, can it be the heart? So we'll go back and look at the literature again. So in patients who, under, who experience cardiac arrest and their post-ROSC EKG does not show a STEMI, this is actually the majority of cardiac arrest patients. And if you treat cardiac arrest, you know that this is true. Most of the patients you see, that first EKG doesn't actually show a STEMI. In general, these patients show decreased survival. And again, that makes sense. These patients don't have a known cause, a known uh, issue that we can definitively treat right off the bat. And when they do go to cath, they have decreased significant lesions when compared to the STEMI group. And again, that makes sense. But when you look at it, about one-third of these patients actually do have a significant lesion. That's a pretty good amount. 
In some studies, up to 80% of patients with no STEMI on EKG have a stentable or significant lesion. Uh, so we can't just forget about these patients and not cath them. To further look at this, there was a systematic review and meta-analysis in 2017, and they asked the question, in patients with NSTEMI, and by NSTEMI they mean no STEMI on their post ROSC EKG, following out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, does early cath compared to late or no cath improve neurologic function and mortality rate? So what they found was early cath in these patients increased survival after procedure, it increased survival long term, and also improved neurologic outcome. So you think that would make us just go ahead and get in cath everybody. If cath and early cath leads to increased survival, increased uh, good neurologic outcome, we should probably cath everybody. When we look at a statement that was just recently put out by the AHA, it says, there is no consensus about the value and necessity of early catheterization for resuscitated patients without ST segment elevation. So all this just leads to confusion. It makes it really tough on the emergency provider who has this post rosc patient with no STEMI to really figure out what to do. There is a helpful algorithm out there that was put out in 2015 by the Journal of American College of Cardiology. And they kind of nicely divide the STEMI and non-STEMI patients, at least give you some guidance based on the literature out there. Because again, what I talked about before with the reason we don't cath everybody, one good reason is that now we're going to be cathing people who don't have a good outcome. Now they're taking up an ICU bed. They have a lot of futile care. Uh, they're going to go into long care term uh, care facilities. So what this algorithm does is kind of help you at least give you one more little step to help you decide what to do. So when we look at the ST segment elevation on EKG, those patients, again, based on literature, in some studies, 90 to 95% of those patients have a significant lesion that probably caused their cardiac arrest. So you go ahead and activate the STEMI team. But also under that says, consider survival benefit risk ratio. And we already do this. Sometimes we do get that STEMI that they are a very old patient. They have a lot of comorbids. They've had a long downtime. They're very acidotic. We know they're not going to survive to walk out of the hospital. So we actually may de uh, determine not to activate the team that time, or we may talk to the STEMI team and say, well, you know what, maybe uh, cath isn't the best thing for this patient right now. When you go to the non-ST elevation group, it says assess for unfavorable resuscitation features. So just like it said in the STEMI box, then consult with the team and transport to cath lab if deemed necessary. So both these broad categories have the same unfavorable resuscitation features that we have to evaluate for. And essentially, the more you have of these, the less likely the patient is to benefit uh, from coronary intervention. And they include unwitnessed arrests, initial non-VFib uh, uh, rhythm, no bystander CPR, greater than 30 minutes of ROSC, ongoing CPR, uh, very acidotic, very old comorbids, uh, traumatic arrests. So these are all things that we know. We know that these factors make it harder for a patient to survive with good, good neurologic outcome. So as when you start getting that patient, oh, maybe that 75-year-old, they don't know how long he is down. There's definitely no bystander CPR. By the time you get there, there's no neurologic response. A pH is 7.1. You start adding these things in, and these patients don't do well, whether they're a STEMI or they're not a STEMI. So once you look at that category, you can then say, is this patient suitable or not? If they have multiple factors, they're probably not suitable for cath. But if there are deemed suitable, then under our ST segment elevation EKG folks, we go ahead and do emergency, angi emergency angiography. Under the non-ST ele elevation group, that's when we talk with the cardiology team and say, does this need to be emergent or should it just be kind of an urgent cath? Because then these patients aren't showing evidence of acute occlusion. Yes, usually one third and sometimes up to 80% can have a significant lesion, but at that point in the EKG, they're at least not showing acute myocardial uh, tissue death. So in summary, in general, when we look at the literature, non-ST elevations uh, patients post-cardiac arrest are far more common than the STEMI folks. Uh, STEMIs do survive more because they have treatable lesions, but both categories do have lesions that may need to be stented. So we know cath works, but it has to be done the right patients.